Well, it pretty much doesn't get any better than Lake Wazee, does it? No, it doesn't. It is absolutely gorgeous. When I say this water is tap water clear, it is absolutely tap water clear. We got green lush hills in the background, and this actually used to be an old iron ore mine, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, Lake Wazee was a pit mine. Ah, it was in operations... I believe in the 1860s and 70s all the way up through the 1980s. Yeah. And uh, they closed it for the last time in the 1980s, so mid-80s, I believe, or late 80s. Filled in with water. Now we have this awesome lake to dive, which is now <laughs> the deepest lake in Inland Lake in Wisconsin. Yeah, so, and um, what, when did they actually let this... I mean, was there like a pump at the bottom? They just let it fill up with water? I mean, yep. what's the story behind so, that? So... All pit mines like this, they have to continuously pump the spring water out while it's in operation. And, and once they, they shut the water up, pumps off, it fills in. It takes years and years to fill in, but once it fills in, you have a great great lake for, for recreation. For scuba diving. Now, like, people from around the world literally come here to go scuba diving, don't they? Yep. Uh, this lake gets a lot of people in the Midwest, a lot of people from Minnesota, like us. Yeah. And then uh, people also come from down by Madison quite a bit and from Chicago and kind of all over the Midwest to dive this lake. It's a wonderful lake to dive. I love diving it. Now being that this used to be an iron ore mine, there was like a, like a road for the trucks to get down to the bottom, right? So yep. every what, every so many feet it drops down and it goes back flat and goes down again or how does that Correct. work? So from here, there's a wall that just kind of goes out around over here and that gets you down to about 60 feet and you see that stick buoy there, the line on that goes down to 100 feet and that goes over another ledge in another wall. And those are the old mining roads that the trucks use to haul out the ore. Right. And so you have this great system of roads and walls and it just makes for fantastic wall diving, which I really like. Um, if There's some pictures online that you can see of aerial photos of what the lake looked like before it was flooded and you can see those very definitive walls. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite features are all the trees that are underwater. Um, as they were mining out towards the center, trees grew up around the rim of the mine. And when they flooded, we now have underwater trees, which now, are really, really cool. This is no amateur lake. I mean, you really got to be a professional to dive here, right? I mean, because yes. this is, how deep is it again? It's over 300 feet, is um, that correct? It's over 300, I believe about 330 to 350 is the deepest part of the lake. Um, it's very easy to get into depths over 100 feet. Yeah. Uh, we were just down at 150 for a little while, um, just on this dive, so... But then it's also really good for a training, like they do a lot of training yep. here. Yep. Over that way, there's a couple of different there's platforms. There's two platforms for training. Um, On those buoys. Yeah. So. And there's things, cool things to see inside. No, they left the equipment down there, didn't they? Or the uh, bottom? I haven't seen any of the old mining equipment. There are a few mines up in northern Minnesota that have a little bit of equipment left over from, from the mining operations. But to my knowledge, there's nothing left from, from the mining operation in the lake. Mm -hmm. so, so say like someone's new and they want to get into this. I mean, you guys have a business where you kind of teach people how to scuba dive? Well, um, we're, we work for AquaVenture Scuba at Maple Grove, Minnesota. And uh, we have Discover Scuba Classes, which is a great way to, to try it out in a pool just to see if the equipment works for you, if, if you like it. Um, you can try it out in a pool. It's like, I think, 50 bucks or so for mm -hmm. the class. And then uh, and if you want to take the full certification class, it takes usually about two weekends. Uh, one weekend in the class and pool, working on skills in the pool, and then one weekend out at the lake, doing your skills out at the lake. And then after that, you're, you're a certified diver. So... Um, if if you like snorkeling, you like being in the water, like uh, scuba fish. diving is something that you you might want to try. It's it's fun and it becomes a, a lifetime sport and it's something that you love. Um, so how how would they get a hold of you? You got a website? Uh, yep, just okay. look up AquaVenture on just online. Google it. Dive and yeah. Photo. yeah, AquaVenture yeah. Dive and Photo in Maple Grove. There's also a lot of other dive shops 
around in the area. There's yep. um, a dive shop here locally. There's one in Madison. There's a few in the Twin Cities area. So, so how long do you think it would take for someone that's absolutely new, start from scratch, to get through the training and actually dive here at Lake Wazee? So, if you really hit it hard, it would just take you about three weeks, maybe a couple of two or three weeks. Oh, that's pretty quick. Um, we took out some new divers last weekend on a fun dive. Yeah. And it was like their first lake dive. Mm -hmm. So, so they, they had like six or seven dives underneath yeah. their belt. So yeah. It's a, so, it's a nice lake. so where else do you guys usually go other than Lake Wazee? Uh, Crosby, Minnesota. There's a lot of there's a lot of pit mines up there near Crosby, and then there are some up near Virginia in Eveleth, Minnesota that we dive. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the Great Lakes, which that's offers, a whole nother ball of wax. I mean, that yep. is as cold as it gets, right? Yep. I mean, it even gets cold here, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. like you have to use a particular dry suit, correct? Yep. So yeah. I have a dry suit. And it has a valve here on my chest that I can pump air into my suit. And that comes off of my cylinders on my back. And then it has a dump valve here that I can let the air out. Yeah, so, why don't you give us a quick 101 on your equipment? Just on the, for the, I know that's okay. kind of hard probably, okay. but well, like. So what we have is actually tech. More we have a tech gear. This is yeah. a little bit. Step so, up above the recreational, so our setups are going to be different than mm -hmm. normal. So we dive gear. two regulators, two two regulators, um, and then we have two cylinders on our back that we can breathe down simultaneously. Um, and so we have a lot of breathing. The technical term is gases. It's not oxygen that we breathe. It's air usually. And so we have a lot of cubic feet of gas on our back because we're going so deep. You need that extra air. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so we can shut off. We have a manifold valve back here. See that one in the middle? Mm -hmm. That's our manifold valve. We can shut that off if we have to. If we have a severe problem, we can shut that off and save half of our remaining gas supply. So other than the dry suit, we have our low pressure inflator. And that inflates our wing on our back. And that's and, where going up and, and that's down. And right? that's how we help manage our buoyancy. And then we can also release the gas out of the wing here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, how, like, how long can you stay underwater for a pure example with your current setup? Uh, this current setup, if I stayed shallow, I could stay underwater for hours. Really? <laughs> if I really wanted to, yes. Yeah. But it, it gets to be a little... A little long and so usually we stay down maybe about an hour or so yeah, yeah. Hour 45 typically. minutes to an hour typically yeah. we can we can do longer if we wanted to but that's kind of what we want to do your profile. Yeah. yeah so our profile we usually go down deep stay down deep for five minutes or so and then gradually just wake up work our way up, our way up. Yeah. now is this even a lake where you got to kind of be concerned about like getting in the bends you can't come Any, up too quick anytime right? anytime it doesn't matter where you are if you're in the ocean if you're in the in here in this lake, anytime you you dive, the bends is always a concern. Right. And so we like what what depth to, do you really have to start being concerned about that? Oh, you can you can get well. I mean, most people about uh, after sixty feet typically. So the no decompression time at sixty feet is I think 55 minutes and most divers would exhaust their gas supply before that. Mm -hmm. So when you start getting 60, 70, 80, you know, 100, 110, 120. Right. I mean, at, at, 100, at 100 feet, your no decompression stop time is 20 minutes, give or take. Wow. At 150, you're at like three or four minutes only. Wow. So... Yeah, if you want to go down to 120 feet for, say, 20 minutes, then you have to learn how to decompress mm -hmm. before you return to the surface. Most scuba diving is no decompression stop diving where a decompression stop is not required, but a lot of times we'll sit for five minutes or so in, in 15 or 20 feet just as a sort of a safety stop before we hit the surface just to kind of decompress for just a couple of minutes just to to give ourselves some margin of safety yeah for uh for 
for avoiding a decompression illness. So say like you're experienced enough and you want to go the long haul here all the way down to 330. Where do you guys usually go in and how long would it take you to go through that adventure? <laughs> so, we wouldn't. We wouldn't. We are not no. equipped for it. No. Um, if you want to go down to 330, you need a rebreather for that. Talk to that guy about the rebreather. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi, Corey. Hi, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> and who's Corey? Uh, Corey's a buddy of mine. Right. We've been diving together for a long time. He's a he's a rebreather diver. Um, he, the, getting into rebreathers. It's a whole getting, different ball of wax. Getting into into into, um, into mixed gases is is a whole nother ball of wax and it's a yeah. lot more training it's a lot more money it's a lot more time yeah with the setup that we have i mean reasonably you're good down to about 150 feet you can go a little deeper than that if mm -hmm. you want um but after that it really makes sense to get a, into a rebreather and those that's a whole other YouTube video. <laughs> right. So do you guys do any other trips uh, outside of the States at all where you guys get a group yeah, of people we, together? We go down yeah. to Florida once a year usually or, or somewhere. We went to Rotan in January. In January. Um, we typically um, will do a trip up to Isle Royal or out to the Straits of Mackinac to do some wreck diving out there. Usually we'll do that once or twice. There's some good wreck diving in Milwaukee with shipwreck explorers giving you a shout out yitka um and uh and isle royal charters up in isle royal and saint ignace scuba in saint ignace michigan for the straits and and there's a few other charters which i can't think of at the moment but uh but they're out there so book a charter boat so, it's a lot so of fun go see some tours. rivers yeah yeah so we love we just love coming out here on the on on the weekends and we camp and we dive and we right. just have a blast. And it really it really doesn't get any more clear than this. I mean when I say this water is tap water clear, it really is tap is. water clear. Um, the only so, clear water we lake superior and it's cold. Yeah, yeah, super cold. Cold all the time. Yeah. Um you so <laughs> down at depth there's so you go over this first ledge, you get down to about 40, 50 feet, it gets a little cloudy from about 40 to 70 feet and then it clears back up again and below 100 feet you can actually you actually have about 40 sometimes 60 feet of visibility it's very clear down there but it's also kind of dark so you need a good light yeah i mean is, is it true to say though being that this should be an iron ore mine does that help kill off the algae here so it stays so um, clear i mean it's just because their bottom composition is all rocks yeah and because there's not a lot of shallow water. You don't have a, a lot of um, a lot of uh, sediments, sediments in the water, right? And there's no streams or rivers coming into this lake, so there's not a lot of uh, like a lot of nutrients up, yeah, and stuff right. washing in. Yeah. So it stays fairly stable. I mean, there is some algae, there is some weed life, not a lot. Um, there's fish, but not a heck of a lot of fish. Mm -hmm. There's probably so. fish swimming around us there's, right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. The right. <laughs> they're about 20 feet offshore, and that's yeah, about it, I right? Mean, whatever fish are here are in the top 20 feet. Um, yeah. There are some trout in this lake that I've seen, right. but not Usually a lot. you're seeing bluegills. Right. Yeah. Bluegills, crappies. Yeah. Bass, a few Bass. walleyes, a few suckers. All right. Um, but other than that, you know, it's a fairly, fairly sterile lake. Um, in terms of nutrients and mm -hmm. stuff washing in, so it stays very clean. It's a very pretty stable environment as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, thank you so much yep. for your time. You. I really appreciate it. What was your name? Mark. Mark. And Scuba Sally, as I'm known. And how can they get a hold of you guys again? Um, just uh, look, us, look up AquaVenture Scuba online. And uh, other than that, there's several other dive shops in the area and around that, that you can look up. For okay. your for your area and yeah you guys got a facebook page or anything yep facebook um it's called scuba squad scuba squad is on facebook it's a facebook group that we run for local divers yep um and so yeah we have a great time we love diving we love local diving especially um we have a blast get a doing good it. buddy hey, right <laughs> all right well you guys take it easy thank you have a good day thanks bye bye